Welcome back to another quick video on Luminar Neo. And in this case, I'm going to break it down just looking at the noise reduction options that are available with the software. You have two options with noise reduction on Neo. The most obvious one is the noiseless AI. It's quite a bit of marketing around this particular feature, but I'm more interested in the real world performance. And you can, of course, use masking for both types of noise reduction. The second offering is the denoise, which is more of a standard type noise reduction that you see on a lot of different software. You get very quick results with the standard noise reduction, but you have to wait a bit of time with the noiseless AI. I've just put some of the information up on screen to help give you a bit of an overview on that. This particular shot is a full frame camera, ISO 6400. This would be what I would consider a fairly typical image to work on. You see with the noiseless, it gives you a recommendation, and in this case, it's saying you should try the high. As far as the length of time that it takes to work, it varies quite a bit. It could be 10 seconds, it could be a minute, it could be half a minute. Much depends on the computer and the resolution and noise in the image. So it wouldn't be as well suited to a quick workflow, but if you have to work on very noisy images, it can be quite useful. You can see the results are actually quite good in this case, but you can also adjust the settings if you want to. All noise reduction is a balance really of trying to eliminate the noise without putting too much damage onto the image or making it look too soft. Interestingly, you can combine the noiseless AI and the normal noise reduction. I normally wouldn't do that, but that is an option for you. Let's take a look at another image inside. This is an APS-C sensor, ISO 4000, so it's relatively noisy because of low light conditions. Can't really cross compare these ISO values between cameras because they do vary. Zoom in just to show you some of the details and you'll be able to see there's a fair amount of color noise in the shadows as well with this image. As per usual, you can adjust them if you want to, if you want to make a slight tweak. Sharpness and details interact with each other. I think the objective is to try and reduce most of the noise without making the image look too plastic. You can use this with JPEGs, that is certainly an option for you, but the results are generally not going to be as good because the camera's already done some noise reduction. Typically you'll have a few artifacts and things to deal with, but still you can run the software and help to clean up some of the noise if there's any left. We have zoomed in quite a bit on this image, you wouldn't normally go in this far, you wouldn't see a huge difference in terms of making a print. If you are shooting JPEG and you want to use noise reduction later on, what I would suggest is you put it into the lower or lowest setting that you can in camera. That way you'll be able to retain as many details as possible. Typically found, even with very noisy images, the noise list does do a pretty decent job of eliminating the grain or luminance noise and the color noise. And you'll be able to see that in the before and after examples. Wouldn't normally be shooting at these high ISO levels. I've got a few more images which I consider very noisy. This is another shot on a full frame camera. I'm maxing out the ISO on this. 25,600 and really is an image normally I wouldn't be able to save. I wouldn't be able to use this. There's a lot of color noise, particularly in the shadow areas, and that's quite difficult to clean up with most noise reduction software. And I'll show you a few different areas. You'll be able to see it's done quite a decent job overall. If you want to restore more details, then you can, of course, tweak those sliders. But even at the default setting, I think it's pretty good without being overly soft. And it's really down to you how you want to process the images. I personally prefer to leave a bit of the noise in the image, particularly the luminous noise, which can look a bit like grain. So I wouldn't try and eliminate all of that because you may end up with a somewhat softer image. This shot was underexposed two stops and I've pushed it and you can see we've got color casts and other problems, but I'm just gonna show you how bad this image is in terms of the noise. This is going far beyond what I would consider to be a usable image in any way, shape or form. And although the shadow areas can still be a bit on the mushy side, it really has done a pretty good job overall. And if I show you in some areas of fine detail, such as the fabric flowers at the top, it's managed to keep the details in those without making it appear too soft. 
I don't recommend that you underexpose your high ISO shots, that's a disaster for noise, but I just did it in this case just to make the noise that much worse. If you're just doing a light grain removal, I think the standard noise reduction is still quite a good option. So if you've got light to moderate noise, I really don't think you need to run the AI. The standard noise reduction would do a fairly good job on that. Hope that video was useful. If you have any thoughts or any suggestions, do drop a comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.